Welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm Sharad. With me, uh, K.S. Mani, who is a well-known novelist, also an academic, as, as well as Malakai Edwin Vethamani, who is an academic, but also a creative uh, individual in his own right, uh, short stories, poetry. And he's edited this new edition of short stories, a very important one, because it's sort of it's both kind of a document of a history of uh, English literature as well. So that's Ronging Ronging, Malaysian short stories, just out today, uh, available at all leading bookstores, uh, Kino Kunia, Garak Budaya, and so on and so forth. And this is uh, K.S. Maniam's uh, new uh, collection of poetry, Two Heartbeats Away. Right? So let's talk about this first, Edwin, uh, this, this collection, and who's in it, and what did you hope, as editor, bringing these short stories together? What, is it, what story did you want to tell on a meta level okay. did you want with this collection? Actually, this book uh, emerged from my, the work that I did uh, as a bibliographer. So as I was actually collecting data on uh, short stories, novels, all these creative writing that has come up uh, by Malaysians, one of the largest genres is actually the short story genre. And um, what I wanted this collection to be is a, a kind of a representative volume of work that has come from from the beginning of uh, writing short stories in, uh, by Malaysians. So the first poem in this collection is actually uh, from 1959. Um, it was actually in an earlier collection uh, of writers who were actually students from the University of, of Malaya in Singapore, people like Wong Gang Wu. Yeah, so, and this collection actually straddles 60 years of Malaysian writing, 28 voices, so you have uh, Lee Kok Liang and K.S. Maniam's uh, important short story, Haunting the Tiger. So it's representative of the different periods in time. And it's also, uh, in a way, collective voices of multicultural Malaysians writing in English. So you have young people like uh, Hana Alkaf, uh, who just published her young adult uh, novel. Yeah? And it also includes uh, Cyrus Manikam, who won the um, Commonwealth Prize. These uh, people were already in this collection, even before uh, Cyrus went on to win her Commonwealth Prize, not because she won that that's inside here. Well, which is, uh, which it's is, not a problem. It, yes, okay. and it works out very well. Okay. Just to add, yeah. uh, the, the collection actually is uh, dedicated to Lloyd Fernando. And uh, as you well know, Lloyd is one of the early uh, advocates of Malaysian right. Uh, writing in English, and I felt that it's really important that we acknowledge the work that he did. And in a way, this is a continuation of, of his two volumes, which came out in 1976 and 1981. So it's been a long while, 81 and then 2020, 2019, when the next collection of stories has come out. Yeah. Right. I wanted to ask you this. I mean, there are two uh, parts to this, but the first part it has to do with the form. Uh, because you're saying there were, you have found many short stories, right? I mean, that the, that in terms of English literatures from Malaysia, short stories as a form has do dominated. Uh, Mani, do you have any uh, sense of why that might be, uh, you know, as opposed to poetry, as opposed to novels? Why would the short story be a form that is um, uh, amenable to the ideas or the expressive uh, desires of, of writers? Well, I, I suppose um, <clears throat> it, it calls for a different, uh, and maybe in a sense, I'm saying this in a sense, qualifying it, uh, an easier discipline to follow in writing a short story, but not so with the poem, you see. So poem is much more demanding. So the first thing that you know, uh, uh, a person say who write, who's, uh, who's proficient in English and so on, say, now I'm going to try my hand at writing. I'll go to the short story, not the poem, because the short story is amenable to my uh, desire to make it do to, to do the things I wanted to do. You know, this is very interesting because I think when people kind of just looking at things, right? The novel seems like hefty bit of work because it's you know it's usually yeah. 300 pages or so on so it's lots of words short stories less words poetry even less words but what you seem to be suggesting is the demands that poetry make um on the writer and perhaps also the reader is actually paradoxically greater can you explain that i mean you're a professor of the language uh, and the literature could you explain why is it that poetry is more demanding than a short story because what uh, you uh, what the writer does with the form poetry in po uh, with the form is that 
he has to put in so many things, you know, uh, so many elements, the feeling, the thought, and so on. Not that this is not, uh, not there in the short story, but much more, you know, much more intense and condensed manner that, you know, it is, it is demanding in that sense. So it takes a long time. It doesn't just, you know, pour out of you, you know. Those days, that would be called juvenilia trash. Ooh, <laughs> juvenilia. Okay, we'll, 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 we'll take that polemic up. But I do want to ask, uh, you know, uh, uh, Edwin this. For you, right, uh, you've done the short stories, you've done the poetry. How do you see this thing? Is it as in the economy of words and expression that poetry demands make it that much more difficult? Yeah. I think poetry uh, imposes certain restrictions in our writing. When you, I mean, there's a lot of distillation that goes in. You, you structure your poems. Um, there are certain images that you want to carry. And so it is more rigorous. And as you know, Maniam said, it's very intense. Whereas um, short stories gives you a, a bit more flexibility. Um, you could explore a theme in a, a certain number of words. Whereas in poetry, especially if you are expressing certain thoughts or certain issues, uh, you want to be careful the kind of images that work together. And poetry also works a lot with sound. And you, you want the, the right feel to, uh, to, the, to the poetry. And so there's a lot of sound images, visual images. You know, a lot of senses come into play. And then to capture it in the right words is something that is quite demanding. And also a lot of discipline is needed to, to go back and rework it till you get it right. OK, so I'll turn to back to your juvenilia, juvenilia uh, trash. juvenile trash, I think is what you were trying to say, uh, what, you, actually what you said. Uh, so the question is, perform, spoken words become very popular now. Uh, and spoken word poetry and poets, uh, you know, led largely by the young. You've seen it. You've heard it. Yeah. What's your uh, take on it? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm sort of a little bit anxious, you know, here. Because um, they say, yeah, you know, I know the language well and this and, and so on, and go, go into it and, and, and produce something. They, they think it's poetry that, um, you know, it doesn't need so much discipline, you know. I just um, dash one off. You can't do that. You know, poetry it is much more demanding, and you got to let it grow within you. It go grow organically, and so on. And, and finally, when it does emerge, there's a lot of weight in it, you know, depth in it, which which would uh, which you never thought you would find. Okay, yeah. which presumably you're saying is absent in that other form. But we'll no, could I just add on? Yes, one okay, very quickly. Yes. No, um, having worked with spoken word poets, when I was doing the collection of Malaysian poetry and I approached some of the writers and they said, oh, we've not published, spoken word poetry is different from uh, poetry on the page. But I think that's an artificial distinction. And uh, a lot of spoken word poetry is, in fact, in, it's a, a lot of good poetry is coming out. And I think people are beginning to understand that if you want to call it poetry, you have to have a certain form. And there, it's not just an expression of angst. I, I, the quality of spoken poetry has improved over the years. And we have people like Melissa Rani, uh, Jamal Raslan. Uh, Omar you know, Musa. Omar, yeah, quite a few of them. And, and they, they have also begun to publish. So, you know, Taboo by Melissa Rani, Sheena Bahardin has two collection of poems. Uh, Jamal has a lot of his work on YouTube. Uh, but and I think it's important because they actually reach young people, and I think it's a way into the more the different kind of poetry that we are used to. So I think it's a it's a good way into poetry. Okay, yeah. thumbs up for the spoken word poets. We'll take a short break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.